was showing up a hot, sweaty mess. I caught her on the fly. Oh, man. I know. I just got back from walking my dog in the deep freeze. Yeah. But you know what's interesting? My feet don't get cold anymore. My feet used to get cold all the time. And I'm wearing a pair of old, like, they're, they're leather and they have a sole Ugg boots that I've had for years. And I had no socks on. And I just, I'm like, I got to take you for a walk. So I just went out and I'm like, yeah, my hair is like slicked back because it's what? Slicked back, Jack. And I'm this today. I don't even, I don't even have a coffee mug because I, my house is in shambles. I love, I love, uh, you know, I used to be quite the planner and organized and all that. And I still am, but there are a lot of things I like to do spontaneously. And I know sometimes it can be a little much for you. So today I did it. I know. I, and I honestly, I don't care. That's, that is interesting that you were uh, talking about that because I had an epiphany today. Oh, um, I love epiphanies. Yes. Do you know last well, Saturday was on the calendar, technically the day for epiphanies, but you're allowed to have it today too. Oh, really? I didn't know that. There's an, a day for epiphanies? There's an, a day for epiphanies according to my Apple calendar. <laughs> oh, I'll You have missed to it. Oh. So you have to I'll, wait till next year. <laughs> Anyway, I was sitting down and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so anxious about them, like doing, like taping up my kitchen. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to feel like. And I'm like, I just, and then I know once it's done, I will be fine, but yeah. I don't like the unknowing part of it. It just freaks me out. And it, it reminded me of um, when I was working out with a, a friend we used to work out really hard and there was our, our trainer used this as a card game, which I'm sure you would. Oh yeah. I know this one. Yeah. The where, deck of cards. Yeah. Anyway, like we're doing burpees, we're doing stair climbers, we're doing all the mountain climbers, all the horrible things that you never want to do wall balls, all of it. And by the fourth card, I was losing it. Like I was, I was You're angry. Trying, no, I wasn't angry. I was like, oh, I was having an anxiety attack and I started to cry because I didn't know what was coming. And it's like, like I, when I used to run, I had to know where I was going. Like I had to know the destination. Oh, and then after running for two, three hours, I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> but I, I was like, oh, and I noticed that that's, that's something that I probably need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, yeah, this is like, oh, this is where, this is where, because the epiphany starts happening and then you start to see it in other things. And then you're like, wait a second. This yeah, is where well, I don't like surprises. Surprises. I don't like surprises. So no, no. Well, that'll be interesting to uncover that and to kind of lean into that and explore <laughs> it in a way that, you know. Well, before we do that, welcome, welcome to 2024. Welcome back to the year of more. Yeah, year of more in 2024. And it sure did not start out good. It didn't for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you want well, to for, speak for, to that? For my family. Yeah. yeah. You want to speak to that? Oh, it just, yeah, the, um, on uh, January 3rd, I think the days are running together. Let me just. Yes, January 3rd, um, my sister's husband uh, died of cancer. Um, very uh, similar to John, uh, very short, um, but I got to be there with them. I got to support her and him in the process. And I can tell you it was an honor, even though that it was the most, it's devastating. It was an honor to be there just to support them. Yeah. So... Send some love out to my sister. Uh, she's she's navigating. Love you, Maggie. Yeah, she's navigating the um, condolences. Yeah, this this journey. Uh, there was a point when um, I was looking at her, and I felt like I was looking in the mirror from last year, like that how she was looking at me because my sister was here for me. It is really wild, and it's so like it's so wild like parallel. Yeah. Um, but also it's not like, 
Like, I know, like, to get into the woo-woo of, like, generational or family patterns and things like that, um, but they weren't related. Mm -mm. Um, The only thing they had in common was us, and they were in the military. Um, They really, they they just started, like, they knew each other, but they, like, Maggie lived in Ontario, so they, we were looking forward to them, like, hanging out while we hung out. Uh, Cause they're both pretty laid back yeah. individuals. Yeah. It's very, uh, yeah. Our hearts go out to you and your family. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's like a double loss. Yeah. Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. And the, I just, well, now I know, uh, understand. I don't know how my sister felt last year, but I understand how she felt um, being the support person. Yeah. But she has uh, such, like, I just, so did I. I had wonderful people around me, and she has wonder. Her her son is here, um, family is around her, so she is loved, and she's getting the help that she needs. So that's and my. I love the gift. I know it might be a, a little too soon to say it, but I love the gift that happened about them moving here like a year ago. From where they've lived their whole life, they decided to move here a year ago. Um, and I, I, when I look back at that, I just think that was a beautiful gift yeah. um, for the circumstances they found. Well, we, we thought it was a beautiful gift for me. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful gift for us. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, uh, anyway, but it's still very, yeah, it's extremely sad and painful. Yes. So what about you? How do we transition this? Yeah. I was like, well, I mean, there's, there's not just sadness and I'm doing a couple of different things. Uh, So over, okay. So for us over Christmas, we had anticipated, we have a little bit of family drama. That's a little bit intense and um, everything went well. We had our family get together. We had a few child meltdowns, which is par for the course when you have that many grandchildren and, Mm-hmm. Um, all in all, everything went well and I was happy with that. So what more can you ask for? I had a real epiphany just before, um, Christmas. Oh, what? More epiphanies. Did you, did you subliminally impression that on me? <laughs> that, that is going to be an epiphany. Um, and the, the epiphany for me was that just because I want to resolve some ish with Not somebody issues. doesn't mean that they want to. And it doesn't, maybe I did said this on the podcast at the end. I don't know, but it doesn't mean that they want to. And, um, that's okay. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like to be in rooms with people that I have like, uh, I call it wobbly energy. I Mm -hmm. like to have that energy cleared up. Um, but not everybody, um, is like that. And apparently I'm not always right. (laughs) And I don't And I don't always get to decide what everybody's going to do. So um, I really released, kind of was released into that awareness at a different level. Like, I know we know that, but, um, and that just let me be free to enjoy the situation and the family. And then, and then we were blessed to be real. Like we were very honored to be invited into your family's uh, arms. And we, I mean, cause that was a real tender moment for your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and, came for uh, Christmas. Aaron and I were really touched. We were really touched about that. Well, we yeah, we really love good. you, and yeah. you kind of are part of our family now, whether you want to be or not. Yes. Uh, my kids love that you were there. Uh, my grandchildren got to play a game with you. You found yeah, your like games. You found your little soul sister in Nora. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. Oh my gosh, she cracked me up. You guys, those for you listening, <laughs> little Nora's like six. Mm-hmm. She, I've never played a game with her before. Her brother was playing with us. He knows her. He knows her. So he caught on right away. I did not catch on. G was trying to see his cards and was so subtle about getting up from the table very quietly. And usually kids at six are like a little bit clumsy when they're trying to cheat. You know, it's very <laughs> obvious, right? No, she just, she walked around the table. She went to the front door, opened the front door and acted like she was getting fresh air at six. <laughs> You don't need fresh air years old. So that when she walked back nonchalantly, she could see his cards. 
Oh my, and he caught on right away. I did not. I, I was laughing. I'm like, oh yeah, you are my soul sister. I like to cheat at games, but I make it very obvious that I'm cheating. But anyways, it was oh fun. Oh my gosh. So that was yes, really and fun. funny story about that. Uh, Nora said to me a few days before you came over, just out of the blue, she goes, <laughs> I don't like your friend, Kim. <laughs> I did not know that. And I'm like, what? Where is oh, that coming from? Right. Right. And Sarah's looking at her and she goes, Nora, it's just because you were picking your nose and she said something to you. And she's like, yeah. I called so, out a six-year-old. What an asshole. Yeah. So anyway, and Nora does love to pick her nose. Like she just likes to get I think it was when she was in, we were doing a recording and she was sitting in that back chair or something. We yeah, were doing something yeah. and she was alive or something. And I was like, Nora, don't like pick your nose. <laughs> Because it was live. She doesn't doesn't want that. Uh, anyway, so then she says to me after Christmas, she goes, I really like your friend, Kim. Oh, I really God. like her. She's really nice. I said, I told you. She was, yeah. <laughs> I won't call her out I, again. <laughs> yeah. That was just funny. Oh, my goodness. But um, yeah, like so it. over for us over Christmas, it was very quiet. And we've worked a lot. Like it has been busy mm -hmm. for us in the background and the building the big epic dream and um yeah so it's just been it's been uh it's been a little dry i say dry january and i mean dry january as in it's been no fun not alcohol i mean i don't i don't have alcohol anyway but yeah it has not been the funnest 10 days i know it's like 10 days I, in I, I, yeah. 10 days. yeah it's a wild um so i have been i've started back uh doing some grief work uh, and I'm really happy. I think I talked about that, um, in the other one. So I now I have another client that's starting after. Um, and I also like, you know, how I am. I like to learn, uh, yeah. it's something that, and I, I, I actually love it too, just, yeah. yeah, I just love to gain more, like a broader perspective. And if it can bring something to the offerings that I have, I I'm all for it. Yeah. So you sent me, I remember I told you, I, you have friends, they're Ocean and V and they have Empowered Healers Academy. Yeah. Oh, um, a little plug for them. Yeah. I, di I didn't know anything about them. I just, I saw them on, I, I followed them on Instagram because of you and I just love their social media. I'm like, oh, you got to tell them they, they are killing it. They're killing um, it. Not really understanding anything that they were <laughs> bringing to the table. They were just like super cool. And then I, dear, I dear saw, friends of ours, yes. yeah, so you, I saw this thing that they were having a master class, and I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what it's about, but I'm curious. So you sent me the link and I went, okay, I'm going to do it. And I was like, you know, I'm, I don't like doing things that, that are all woo woo wee. They freak out. I don't, you I don't, don't know. know. I don't know, but I'm like, I'm doing it. And you said, you're cat. Don't worry. You're going to be in a safe space. You're going to be supported. Uh, it was just, it was very, um, intriguing and they do, they have, um, a method that they've a practice that they've created. It's called sit, which is subconscious imprinting technique, which you are a sit practitioner. I so am. That's, that's fascinating. But the, um, so what the, the masterclass is on, it's like, um, Oh gosh, why can't it's I helping even people? It's helping people uh, find kind of the root pain. Yeah, the root, and yeah. then like just yeah, like finding the root, and then there's the next. Today we're working on pattern interrupt, mm. which I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is. So listening to it and hearing everything, and they did some work with us too. Like you can do work online um, for individuals. We all did yeah. something, and. Uh, anyway, I, I really felt like it was something uh, I could bring uh, to my practice, my my offerings, because it's it's all about things that get stuck in our bodies. One of the things she said that I loved was like humans lie, our bodies don't, and that doesn't mean that we're lying. It's like no. we're lying to ourselves. We just stuff stuff down, and I was like, yeah, your body knows, keep score, all of that, that, and things show up in us, and repeated chronic things and i just thought wow this is amazing so i i'm doing that it's very powerful when you start when you have your own experience that connects some hidden memory or 
uh, understanding or perspective mm -hmm. with current situation. And there's a connection that happens internally, like a knowing that happens yeah. when you're like, oh my gosh, like this is what? So for me, many years ago, five years ago, I had been in a healing session with V. She's an acupuncturist as well. And she had no idea what was going on because I was laying on the bed with my eyes closed and she was beside me. She had no idea. This was internal stuff. And what She's is intuitive happening? though. <laughs> oh, highly intuitive. And she, she asked me a question about my sister. What happened with me and my sister when I was, what happened when I was 13? And then she said specifically with your sister. And I have, I have a very critical event happen when I was 13. It's very common knowledge. And it was very traumatic is like, like the big T if you yeah, had to yes. scale it. Um, but my sister was a bystander. Okay. Yeah. She was like um, a bystander. And so I was like, what do you mean what happened with my sister? And in an instant, so I'm 50 years old laying there. And in an instant, I'm taken back to the moment at 13, shortly after the event yeah. um, where I tried to, I went and stole my sister. Yes. from school right. and I brought her back to my foster home and I, cause I wanted to protect her from yeah. what happened to me. And of course the police came, they had to take her away. Cause at 13, you're not allowed to steal your children. <laughs> They're your siblings. Nope. And, nope. um, but in that moment, okay. So in that moment, I'm brought back to that exact moment. I'm now 50 years old laying on a table, like mm -hmm. miles away from and yep. years away from that moment. And in an instant I connect my work, my 15 year career as a child protection worker with the moment that I tried to save my sister mm -hmm. and couldn't save her. Mm -hmm. And they connected so internally, so powerfully that it, I started to cry hysterically. Like I was just bawling and it's going to make me cry now because it brought me back to that little kid mm -hmm. that was trying so hard to protect her sister. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, my sister and I have had a very tumultuous friend uh, relationship, as some sisters do. And I said to her, so as soon as I left, the table, V had no idea what was going on. And as soon as I left the table, I phoned my sister and I said, you better pull over because this is going to make you cry like a fucking baby that I'm about to share. I was like, I spent my entire life trying to redo, reenact that particular event by it, it, it determined my career path. Mm -hmm. It determined my parenting style, mm -hmm. like all of that. Yeah. It makes me cry. Mm -hmm. But the other part, so that's beautiful. Like the release. So what happened to me is that connection made me realize, because I thought I was pretty fucking smart. <laughs> Like, yeah. I know, I know that I came from a rough childhood. So of course, helping people seems like a, that seems like an easy connect. It's not like some big fucking, you know, secret, universal secret. And so what I realized is how much of my life, life's conditioning had actually created the filter for which I see everything. Yes. And then that's what started to unpack over the last five to six years is really unpacking that filter that I had been living with and seeing mm -hmm. things. Even though I was like, yeah, I know I was really badly abused. Yeah. I had a terrible relationship with my mother. Yeah. My father abandoned us. Like, yeah, I worked through all that. I've done all the things like I'm good. I'm good. Like I, I went to social work school. I've done lots of, you know, counseling, like all those, but it really, it really depicted to me the power of how our conditioning creates the perspective but the other piece of that is as we change our perspectives change mm -hmm. and we need to be able to unlock some of that so it was really powerful and freeing um and created the catapult to some pretty intense healing myself of yeah. energy within myself but also the relationships of those around me yeah so well, whoa sorry i didn't mean to get all like no, i don't no, mean no, to apologize, no. don't yeah that is thank you for sharing it. And, you know, uh, as, um, what I do, that is something that happens a lot of times with people who are grieving when they go through the, it's, it's a program, it's an educational program, but it's so therapeutic 
and it's hard yes. and you have to go through your life and losses and you don't look at your life that way. So yeah. this program, this sit um, is actually like you're going in generally and I, it, 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 I shouldn't generalize it. I don't know enough about it, but it's you, you have a chronic pain in your body. Uh, or certain things show up when you're in a certain situation. It could be anxiety. Like, it could be yeah, all like thought patterns. Yeah. And then what happens is, and this is like again for me, and I I don't know anything about sit. So this, but what is sitting with people and listening to their stories? No pun intended. Yeah, no pun. In, well, that's where I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm all about sitting with people and listening to their story, like your story is so powerful and moving and I have so much compassion for it. I'm not going to carry it. I'm just going to love you through. Like, it's like, uh, but that's why I'm so intrigued by this. And your story is a testament to something that practitioners and counselors and psychiatrists, they don't, they're treating this over here but not connecting the dots, like our bodies and our minds and our hearts and our spirits, they're all connected. connected. Yeah. So listen beautiful. to me, I'm all woo woo. <laughs> what? Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to send a direct clip um, to uh, Ocean and V of this episode. I'll tell yeah. them to listen because they've been, yeah. they've been called yeah. out. They, anyway, I'm so like, I just, I oh, want to get to know them. them. They're just, they're, they're like this. What I loved about the, the, um, the master class, which I, oh, I was like, oh my gosh. And I really like literally did not feel qualified. I wasn't qualified. None of us are qualified. I went in, that's why I'm going there. I'm not qualified, <laughs> but I was very insecure. And they are so like, their stories are so powerful. The way that they had it set up was so comfortable and engaging and not once did I look at my watch and go, when is this going to be over? Yeah. They're very like magnetic. Really, really. Yeah. They're charismatic. They're, they're, they're you, there's a authenticity and there's authenticity because there's vulnerability. Like there, you can't be authentic without being vulnerable. And yeah. yeah. So I thank you for sending me the, um, the link. You're welcome. They are. Uh, I did meet them for four or five years, five years ago or so. And um, just in that realm of um, healing and, and um, learning. And then we've become, since then, we've become very, they very close friends. They are very yeah. dear. Uh, Darren kind of feels like, uh, he feels like a, a father figure to them. Not that they need fathering. That's not it at all. They call no. him Papa D. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um. But they are, and they are, I've seen them have the most impact on Darren. Actually, Ocean helped us create the branding and copy for Door Gurus. She's, yeah. well, they're both, I just, I, yeah, I and can listen my, to them speak. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm excited to see, yeah. I'm excited to see the expansion in you and the release um, that you might experience over the next little while as you um, start to explore that. Yeah. So, so that's that's 2024 starting out uh 2024 and the year of more mm -hmm. and um uh we're gonna start uh we're gonna start doing a little bit more work around the podcast right yes we we're have to get together and actually sit down do and some plan content out. And some planning we're gonna bring some guests on we're really excited mm -hmm. we're really excited for 2024 um could just we have to bring get on V and Ocean? We could. They would love it. They would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I've had them on podcasts before. Mm -hmm. um, we could one hundred percent. They would come on in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what else? I'm heading to Ontario this weekend. Um, yes. There's a women's entrepreneurial event that I um, our company has done some sponsoring, and then I'm going to do facilitate a panel discussion on setbacks to success so nice. you'll be um, good at that yeah it's my first tra time traveling by myself in a while so yeah well look at you go that's i look forward to hearing about that myself what am i doing you know what i'm just doing a lot of learning doing yeah. some work and uh, i think that's pretty much and you're it. gonna hold the fort down for us yes 
Um, yeah, well, uh, thank you for joining us. Are you talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm talking to the listeners. I'm trying to wind this up. Yes, we're going to land the plane uh, because you have... We are terrible at this. We are terrible at landing the plane. We are still looking for a handler. If anybody wants... Hey, I'm going to put a shout out. We have lots of young people that listen to us. Yeah. If anybody wants to learn how to create, how to create content and um, publish and edit podcasts and um, manage us, we are looking for interns who want to work Um, for free. Working for free. Yeah, help us, help us get out there, get the word out there that it's never too late. And that's where, like, again, it's never too late to stop learning. No. Um, and honestly, like, it's never too late to travel on your own. No. Nope. Like doing something like you haven't done in a while. Um, yeah, and it's never too late to try a master class, even though master class really intimidated me. So. Oh, did it? It's just a fancy word for a webinar. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just really like... Um, like, you know, when you, if you, years ago, when you used to travel and people would be like, here, come for a free breakfast and you go to the yes. free breakfast and then they give you a big presentation. That's yes. basically yeah. fancier. Okay. But we have a photo shoot for a photo shoot and some video clips. Was I, I don't even know what's going to happen with this, but I paid for it and we're going to get our, we're getting our makeup done and our hair, which I don't know if you'll have to get your hair done. I'll do but, my own hair. Yeah. Yeah, your hair always. I really looks do good. my hair. Yeah, your hair looks good. Anyway, we're going to do a photo shoot for our podcast. Yes, that's our and first for big investment, and then we. Oh also... yeah, that's right. That's a big investment. Yeah. yeah. And then we um, we're going to do. We have to work out the details, but we have a plan to do um, a live get together. Live event coming mm-hmm. in twenty twenty four. You should do it yep. in the spring. Yeah, I think that'll be a good time. Yeah. All right, my All friend. Right. Well, we are yeah, gonna loves and hugs to your family. Uh, Maggie, uh, loves yes. and hugs to you. She'll probably take a listen. And um, till next time. Yeah. See ya. I don't, it's just cheers. Just Stanley. How dare you be just Stanley? You're, you are in charge. Okay. See you next time. See ya next podcast. Yeah. I don't know how to end this. Oh, there we go. Oh, don't know how to end it.